bed look out, turned it loud, they may, and you saw a teller, this the chimes first. Benias and Scarlubi were talking quietly to Calder next morning. It was such a fine spring day when Duncan stormed up, followed by Sir Hendel. Hello, chuckled Benias, how we go? Another came off, said Duncan. This kid has pushed me. The thing can fit a city, they didn't. This is a kid to bed lookout. We've never managed to mend you, he said, and if it happens again, I'll leave it the back of the shed. Where's you always back on me? It's not far. Of course it isn't far, said the thin controller. He was just walking past. Be quiet, you idiot. I've had to talk to you this morning. Go away. Aye, get back. Rude to me said the thin controller, just walking away. Scarlipper said nothing. He just winked at Benaise like this. As you were saying, Carl, there, remarked Benaise, you had two curses on your trail trip. Do you ever take more? No, I learned so steep that we only allowed one. We each have our own. Man's called Catherine. I know her well. It's most important. Where? asked Sandal. Where are their coaches? Ours, said Calder, are something more. You pull your coaches and you can say head. You push harbors up. So we can't say. They watch the land first. The guards watch us too, of course. But Catherine is so clever. The turner at once if anything is wrong. It must take a load off your main scarlet, Scarlet said. How they smiled, but not off my buffers. Claiming's hard work and needs a lot of steam. A feminine there in a turning time coming down, he went on. It's different. Catherine and I just roll. It nurse. We need no steam for that. Sir Handel sighed irresistibly. Ah, I should like that, he said. With your automatic brakes, it sounds like a rest car. That, McLean called out, was just the mistake Per Godred made. Who? asked the little engines. Is Godred? And did I say something to make you mind? Of someone who's not with you? asked Sendel. Yes, said Calder. Godred was O number one, named after King. Perhaps it went to a smoke box and made him conceited. He'd never keep a good lookout. He'd roll down the lane, looking anywhere but at the track. You'll have an accident, I told him. Pooh, Godred would say. If God's automatic brakes of it, eh? And driver's got his eye brake. What more do you want? More sense from you, they said. No engine can't stop if it isn't ready to obey his driver's controls. The first thing a young engine learns, and it's scarred over. God did never learn sense. His driving famine and the men's are all spectrum. They even took him to pieces to see if anything was wrong. But he still went on in the same error way. Now, one of the fine day, he was going up and waiting at a station for Godred, coming down to pass me. As I waited, so it happened. One moment he was on the track, the next his driving famine jumped a car. As he rolled over, no one's hurt. His coat stayed on the rails, and the guard braked it for stop. They brought Godred home next day. We've no money to mend you, said our manager. You'll go to the back of the shed. As time went on, poor Godred got smaller and smaller, till nothing was left. But what happened? asked Duncan anxiously. It's not nice to talk about, 
said Calder. But where's Nip Nash? What's happened? At Travers, use God's its parts to mend us, answered Calder awfully. It's a handle and Duncan, and Usla ever silent long after Calder had gone home, near the scarred over. Orn knows. Never ever mentioned it Calder made the starer.